All right, Chris here from thattutorguy.com. Um, you may wonder why my number one study tip video would involve a blue pile of paper. And the answer is, this is the best thing you can do for yourself. Now I'll explain why in a second, but let me paint a picture for you, okay? It's two days before your final in math or chemistry or science or whatever. It's two days before the final and you're like, oh man, cool. I'm looking forward to knocking that one out. It's the one I'm least worried about. And why, why am I the least worried about that test compared to history or whatever else you got going on? It's because you're going to have this. You're going to have a stack of blue paper, but it's not going to be blank. On each sheet of paper is going to be a cookbook. You know, I call this a cookbook and it's full of recipes. And each recipe is going to be how to do step by step the types of problems that you think are going to be on the final. And you'll know which types of problems are going to be on the final because they've been on quizzes, they've been on tests, they've been on the midterm. You kind of know what's coming, right? If you look at all your old tests and quizzes, you know what's coming. Now you might be saying, Chris, how the heck am I going to come up with a book that thick of all those types of problems for recipes of how to do all this stuff two days before a final? That's insane. Well, the answer is you started this at the beginning of the semester. You've been making one of these for each type of problem you've had trouble with the entire semester or the entire year if you're in a year-long class. So these are just already laying around. And that's where we come around to why it's got to be blue and why it's got to be legal size. It doesn't have to be blue. It could be a different color. It doesn't have to be legal size, but I highly recommend it. What you need is a, a shade of paper you're not going to lose. Because if you spent the entire semester or the entire year making these things, you know, if you're making one while you're doing your homework or studying for the first chapter test, you know, you can probably not lose track of it for a week or two weeks. But in my experience, every student I've ever had who did these, and oh my God, the students love them. They frame them, they put them on their walls. If we can't find one before the final, we're like, oh my God, we got to make it again. Because it was like so useful. But if you can't find one, it's sad. So you want to make them as easy to find as possible. You want them to be as special as possible because you're going to want to find them all nine months from when you started the class, okay? So that's why it's gotta be something that you won't lose. And even if you tell yourself, oh, I'm gonna put them all in a special notebook or a special place or in the folder of my pocket, in the folder of my like three ring binder, trust me, man, I've seen students do it all and they've all lost at least a few of them, if not half. And even though they love them, and even though it's super important, they're super useful, don't lose these things, okay? So. I picked blue and legal size because it just happened to be that I had like an old roommate who had left like a full on thousand sheet ream of this stuff in, in my room when I moved in someplace, you know, a long time ago. And uh, so I just had some laying around, started using it for scratch paper, and that's kind of how it started. But the point is, it turned out to be really useful. It was a weird color and a weird size because very easy to find legal size paper sticking out of your notebook when your notebook is not legal size, right? When your notebook is this tall, it's very easy to find something that's this tall sticking out of it. Um, so, how do you go around coming up with this cookbook? You know, if you keep them all in one place, you got yourself a book when the final comes around or when the midterm comes around. But over the course of the semester, every time you do a type of problem that's hard, you want to make a cookbook. Now, when you're doing the homework assignment the first time, maybe you don't need to make a cookbook right then. Because you never know. Like, as you're doing the problems, some are going to be relatively easy. And, you know, for every student, even if you think you are not a math person or bad at math, Every student finds some stuff pretty easy. Like I have yet to meet a student who's in geometry or pre-calculus who's not really good at solving an equation, like an algebra one type equation. Like it's just, that, that becomes super easy, right? So you don't need to put that kind of stuff in it. And then in each chapter, usually students kind of have an easy time, at least a few things. After you've done one homework assignment, it usually clicks. So you just want to kind of save the cookbooks for the hard stuff or the easy stuff, whatever. If you're someone who loves, loves cookbooks and once you try it, you love it, you want to make them for like most of the types of problems. But once you come up with a cookbook, what you want to do is do it in all your own language. So if you're making a cookbook about factoring or about you know, reducing some horrible rational expression, and rational expression is what the, is that fancy math term for just a giant fraction with like tons of X's upstairs, tons of X's downstairs, Every student I've ever tutored did not like these, okay? So they're, they're rough, they're gnarly. And you have to memorize some steps like factor out the denominator, factor the numerator, and then cancel stuff that's upstairs and downstairs, right? Now the way I just said that probably made a little bit of sense to you if you've ever seen factoring or rational expressions. I did not say it the way a math person would say it. So you know if you look in your math book, 
you ever tried to read your math book, it's insane, right? Like it's so hard to understand what they're talking about because they, they use all this crazy math vocabulary. So what you want to do is when you make your cookbook for you know, simplifying rational expressions, you're going to want to name it something really simple like you know, problems with giant crazy fractions of x's in them. So that's the name of this little particular page in your cookbook. And then you're going to write down the steps the way you would interpret them. So if step one is to factor the denominator or pull common terms out of the denominator, whatever, step number one in your cookbook could be factor the denominator. Or if you're not sure what that means, because you're not even, you know, I mean, like factoring, maybe it just says, hey, you know, see what you can make parentheses downstairs and whatever. Like maybe that reminds you better of factoring than if you'd use the word factoring. And then maybe step two is factor the numerator, or maybe it's use parentheses on the numerator, or maybe it's, oh God, we gotta factor the numerator. But that's step two. So you just wanna write it down in terms that you, specifically, would wanna see done. Words that you understand. Then once you have one of these, you're studying for the test, well, hey, so you probably made this cookbook while you were studying for the test. And now you've got it. Now the last final step is to save it, right? Because when the midterm comes around, when the final comes around, you're gonna to wanna to dig up all your old cookbooks. And like I said, make them easy to find, put them in a safe place. I've had students cry because they couldn't find a couple of cookbooks. And we had to spend like an hour long tutoring session just like recreating the missing cookbook pages that they had lost. So it's really sad when you lose them. It's a really hot tip, trust me, this is like so good, it's gonna save your bacon, you'll never go back. All right, so for um, more tutoring tips along these lines, some inspirational stories. Maybe you're not a math person. Maybe you want to hear about how some students I've tutored over the years who are not math people but became math people kind of enough to get on with, you know, get through math and science and get to what they wanted to do. Uh, more stories about that. Check out that tutorguy.com slash study tips. And I'll see you in the next one.